Imagine you are in the 90s and you want to send an email with a picture of your cute cat, Fluffy. Now, your image is just a bunch of ones and zeros. That's how computers store information. But here's the thing. Emails only work with text, not binary data. They use something called ASCII, which is a way of turning letters and symbols into numbers. So this is the ASCII table. Every letter has a corresponding number. For example, the letter H in ASCII is represented by the number 104. Or in binary, 01101000. The letter I is represented by 105. Or 01101001. So when you type an email, each letter gets converted into 8 binary digits, also known as a byte, like it's part of some secret code. But if both text and image data are ultimately just binary digits, why can't you just send your adorable cat picture directly? Here is the catch. Binary data can have all sorts of byte values ranging from 0 to 255. ASCII only uses values from 0 to 127. So some of these binary values don't match valid ASCII characters. They could get truncated, or worse, they might cause the email server to explode. If you try to send your image using raw binary data, the email system might misunderstand parts of it, corrupting the image or failing to send it altogether. And that's where Base64 saves the day. Base64 encoding converts your image's binary data into a set of safe, text-friendly characters, ensuring the email server stays happy. The general strategy behind Base64 is to pick 64 characters from the 128 available in ASCII that are the least likely to cause problems in text-based systems. So first, we use the letters of the English alphabet, that's 26 uppercase letters and 26 lowercase letters. Then, we can add numbers 0 to 9, giving us 62 characters. Finally, we throw in two special characters, the plus and the slash, and one more, the equal sign, which is used for padding. Let's take a quick example. We want to encode the text cat. First, we take the ASCII representation of each letter. When combined, this gives us a 24-bit sequence. Since base64 uses a 64-character alphabet, we can group the binary digits into 6-bit chunks. Each of those 6-bit groups corresponds to a base64 character according to this table. When we map these groups to base64 characters, cat becomes Q0FU. One thing to note is that base64 encoding increases the size of your data. For every 3 bytes of data, Base64 turns it into 4 ASCII characters, which is 4 bytes. That means the size increases by 33%. So your cat will gain some weight, but will be safe. If the number of bytes you want to encode doesn't perfectly divide by 3, Base64 uses padding to complete the data. For example, if you encode the word hi, the Base64 output will add one equal sign at the end, to make the total number of characters divisible by 4. And if you have an even shorter word, Base64 will add two equal signs to the encoded string. Let's write some code. Many languages have built-in Base64 support. We can try our previous example with the cat string. We get the expected result. Now let's try and implement Base64 from scratch.
we process the input in chunks of 3 bytes, combining these bytes into a 24-bit value. When fewer than 3 bytes remain, we handle the missing data by filling it with zeros. From the 24-bit value, we extract 4 6-bit segments, which are then used to index into a predefined base64 alphabet. Also, we add padding if necessary. Let's compare our solution with the built-in method. For the few examples I selected, they produce the same output, so our solution looks good. Ok, so let's see a real-world scenario. We'll take the image of Fluffy and encode it. This huge pile of characters you see here is the encoded image. Next, we'll create a simple web page and embed the base64 string to display the image. And that's it. With base64 encoding, we can safely turn any binary data into text. Thanks for watching, and remember, next time you see a long string of random looking characters, it might just be fluffy in disguise.